Today, Digital Currency Group's Barry Silbert steps down as Grayscale's chairman. And ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood provides insight into her firm's pending application for a spot Bitcoin ETF. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Tanea McKeel. Crypto prices in the red to kick off the final week of 2023. As of noon Eastern, Bitcoin dipped nearly 3%, trading around $42,300. That's according to CoinMetrics. Ether fell nearly 2.5%, trading above the $2,200 level, and Solana tanked more than 8.5%, but remained above $100 after crossing that mark over the weekend. It's still also the biggest winner of the year in crypto, up around 950%. Okay, let's focus on MicroStrategy's performance this year as we take a look at today's top crypto stories. What was a little-known software stock not too long ago has become well-known as a proxy for the price of Bitcoin after the company began buying the cryptocurrency in 2020. That bet produced a more than 330% boost for investors in 2023, outpacing almost all U.S. companies valued at $5 billion or more. For example, MicroStrategy's performance tops NVIDIA's more than 200% rally and Meta's 190% surge this year. Since MicroStrategy started accumulating Bitcoin in mid-2020, the firm has amassed more than 174,000 tokens, worth more than $7 billion as of late Friday. The vast majority of the company's value now comes from Bitcoin. Speaking with CNBC last week, MicroStrategy's executive chairman, Michael Saylor, said he expects the bull market in Bitcoin to continue in 2024. You can check out the full story over at CNBC.com. Next, Barry Silbert is resigning as Grayscale's chairman. That's according to this SEC filing from today, which revealed that Digital Currency Group's chief financial officer will replace Silbert on January 1st. DCG owns crypto asset manager Grayscale. According to the filing, DCG's president also stepped down from the board. In the filing, Grayscale did not provide a reason for the changes, but in a statement shared with us, the firm said its investors will benefit from the new leader's respective experience in the financial services and asset management industries as the firm prepares for Grayscale's next chapter. I spoke with a person close to the matter who said the changes are happening as the company prepares for the SEC to potentially approve a spot Bitcoin ETF in January. Grayscale is, of course, seeking U.S. approval to convert its Bitcoin trust into an ETF. When the D.C. Court of Appeals ordered the SEC in August to scrap its rejection of Grayscale's attempt to convert its popular GBTC fund into a spot Bitcoin ETF, it was widely considered a win for the crypto industry. Silbert is the founder and CEO of DCG, which was one of the crypto firms sued in October by New York Attorney General Letitia James for allegedly defrauding investors. Silbert was also charged with allegedly trying to conceal heavy losses. and At the time, Silbert called the allegations baseless. All right, sticking with the much anticipated decision on those pending spot Bitcoin ETF applications for our main story. The SEC has delayed several of those applications, including those of Grayscale, BlackRock, and the joint proposal from ARK and 21 shares. The first deadline to approach is that of ARK 21 shares. The SEC must approve or reject that application by January 10th. So I spoke with ARK Invest Kathy Wood to see where that application stands. And if she's feeling optimistic, we'll see a spot Bitcoin ETF in the U.S. in the coming weeks. There's been a lot of buildup around this Bitcoin ETF, so I want to get right into that. The SEC is due to give you a decision on your application at ARC for a Bitcoin ETF on January 10th. Um, and like I said, it seems like it's been a lot of back and forth between potential issuers and the SEC, but that it's been productive, I think, is the vibe that I'm getting. So to the extent that you're able to say, how would you summarize sort of the current state of progress on the Bitcoin ETF front? Yeah, well, after being denied a few times without any questioning to uh, be questioned back and forth this time around has been very encouraging uh, and also shows the depth of the SEC's knowledge of the issues and understanding of them. So um, we're quite gratified and, uh, you know, hoping, hoping. <laughs> I believe the SEC set a deadline for final updates to filings of this Friday. Um, so I, I heard encouraged. Are you optimistic about, you know, the shape your application is in and that it could get greenlit by January 10th? Yes, we're very encouraged with our, our partner, uh, 21 shares. I think we've crossed every T, dotted every I. Uh, I we believe to the SEC's uh, satisfaction. I think the messaging around 
the 29th is, look, if you're not going to be ready to go on or around, let's say, January 10th, then do not submit anything more to us because we have too much to do here. Uh, and again, that also is encouraging because uh, it feels like a bit of uh, that the SEC is setting a deadline for itself. So that's great. Understanding the confidential nature of these talks, can you tell us a little bit about what some of the feedback has been like? Is it is it super, super technical? Is it around disclosures? I mean, I mean, these conversations that you've been having, what, and you've already said a little bit of this, but what does it say to you about the stance of the SEC, which, as we all know, historically has been um, not as engaging and, shall we say, collaborative on Bitcoin ETF efforts? Yeah, I guess the, the biggest controversy, and this is in the press, uh, but I'll highlight it because I think for most of it, most of us, it has been wow, are they going to allow in-kind uh, transactions? So, you know, limiting the tax uh, impact of transactions, or is it going to be primarily in cash? And uh, I think as has been reported widely, uh, I think it's cash, uh, not in-kind, at least at the outset here. Uh, and I think there are just a few people within the SEC who, um, are just somewhat concerned that banks will be forced to touch crypto. Um, uh, we're not sure they will be, but uh, uh, we're talking about something very technical. So uh, to answer your question, yes, very technical. Uh, but that that has been, I think, the big issue as we head, hopefully, towards a resolution. Well, the bull thesis around the Bitcoin ETF assumes that once an ETF or several of them get approved, that's going to help attract new capital into the market, particularly from institutions and, you know, those investors that have been really curious and, you know, have watched crypto, but have been sitting on the sidelines waiting for a product of this kind. A lot of people out there, however, um, you know, we're hearing are skeptical that the market reaction aren't going to match the current buildup that we've been watching, like we talked about with the just, you know, the engagement and the feedback. Um, especially as of late, as firms like yours continue to be in conversation with the SEC, and that what could happen instead is more of a relative value trade out of existing products like GBTC, which you're an investor in, um, and crypto futures ETFs into the spot ETFs. What do you think? Well, I do think there will be repositioning for all kinds of reasons, but uh, I do also believe that uh, the SEC approval will be a green light for institutions who have been holding back. Now, we've had an, a big anticipatory move here. It wouldn't be surprising if we saw a sell on the news. That's a, an expression in the market. Sell it. You have a lot of anticipation. A price moves up. Uh, the event happens, and then uh, especially fast trading organizations sell on the news. But uh, beyond that, that I think will be just a, maybe a very short-term phenomenon. Uh, I think that the institutional push into Bitcoin will be quite significant to the price. In fact, uh, in our price expectations going forward, the biggest contributor is institutions as they move you know, they don't have to move very much in. They can move. They, there are trillions of dollars in assets to be allocated. If they just move in 0.1%, forget about 1%, but even 0.1 or 0.2%, that will move the needle, especially as, uh, as we know, the number of Bitcoin outstanding right now uh, is about 19 and a half million. And the the further that number, the furthest that number is going to go is 21 million. So the scarcity value as institutions move in uh, will begin to move the price, we believe. 
Going back to Bitcoin investment products, it's been more than a month since ARK and 21 shares launched a suite of five actively managed Bitcoin and ETH futures ETFs. I think we spoke that day, actually. How has it been going? Is what's what is the demand like that you're seeing for these products? And um, if you could just go a little further on, you know, what your expectations for their performance are, should your spot Bitcoin ETF get approval? Yeah, um, well, as with any uh, new uh, ETF, there it's it takes a while to educate uh, educate investors, asset allocators, advisors uh, about these new offerings. So slow as it goes, but the most important thing that's happening right now is you know we're watching the plumbing and the plumbing works. That's that's extremely important. You know, twenty one shares is the largest pure play ETP crypto provider in the world with roughly $2 billion in assets. So th that has been mostly in Europe. This is in the US now. And so we wanted to make sure the plumbing works and it's working beautifully. Uh, and I do think that uh, a spot Bitcoin ETF will stimulate once, once institutions and other investors have a toehold into the space, they will want other way, they will want ways to diversify. And so we wanted to be ready with those five strategies to help with actively managed diversification strategies. Some are lower volatility, uh, some are more diversified with digital asset equities. Uh, so again, we're, we're trying to be, uh, uh, shall I say, a go-to for anyone thinking about investing in, in digital assets. Wood also provided her outlook for Bitcoin, Ether, and Solana in 2024. You'll be able to check out her full interview over at cnbc.com slash crypto world. Okay, that's all for today, but we'll be back again tomorrow with an in-depth look at regulatory developments in the U.S. for digital assets. We look forward to seeing you then.